Okay, this YouTube video will address the subway problem that occurs at the tail end of the measurement comparison slide set. We'll go into some detail on how we can use vector measurements to help us solve a problem of motion. Okay, the first thing we need to remember is that scalars are different from vectors. Vectors are kind of special. We talk about scalars commonly because scalars are just a magnitude. But when we add an orientation or a direction to it, then we have a useful tool called a vector. These record both the magnitude and the direction. This is handy because graphically we can draw this as a series of arrows that represent uh, the direction of motion and if we scale the length of the arrows, we can make comparisons one to another. And the mathematics for this is fairly straightforward and can be handled graphically. Recall that in vector addition, it's simply a matter of creating a new vector that creates a connection in the direction from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. Let us return to the idea of relative motion, where a stationary observer looks on to a more complicated system where more than one thing is in motion. Imagine that we're viewing a subway car that is moving 50 kilometers to the hour to the east. In it, two individuals are tossing a ball back and forth. They pass a stationary observer on a platform at 50 kilometers per hour, but in doing so, they're tossing a ball from front to back at 40 kilometers per hour, at 10 degrees south of west, and or in other words, 10 degrees to the wall of the subway car. The observer is stationary, meaning that she has no velocity. So here are the givens for this problem the velocity of our observer is 0 kilometers per hour. The velocity of the car is 50 kilometers per the hour east. And the velocity of the ball is 40 kilometers to an hour, 10 degrees south of west. Start by drawing out one of the vectors. We'll need to pick a scale. I selected that one centimeter will be one kilometer per hour. And we need to pick orientations. I suggest using standard map directions. In other words, north is up, east is right, west is to the left, and south is below. If we do this, we'll need a five centimeter line to indicate the motion of the car, and we'll need to point it to the right. That's going to be our five kilometers per hour to the east. Next, let's add the velocity of the ball I'm representing it here by the red arrow. This is drawn using a protractor at 10 degrees below a line that goes to the west. And that gives us a four centimeter line that is 40 kilometers per hour, 10 degrees south of west. Now we're ready to connect the tail of the throw of the ball to the head of the motion of the car. This is our velocity of a car times the velocity of the ball, and jointly it gives us the vector that is seen from the stationary motion of the observer on the platform. If we measure it out with a ruler, we find that it is 1.2 centimeters, and that means it represents 12 kilometers per hour. If we measure its orientation, we find that it is 32 degrees south of east. That means the ball is moving 12 kilometers an hour, 32 degrees south of east for our stationary observer. And we have solved the problem. The careful measured drawing with a ruler and measurements and adjustments made with a protractor for orientation is perhaps the simplest way to solve this problem. But as a counterexample, I would like to show you how you could solve the same problem with trigonometry. You do have to lay out the diagram much as we did before with careful measurements and a protractor. 
The next step is to break it into right triangles so that we can apply trigonometric relationships. The first question we can ask is, what is the line length of line B? B is a connector that goes from the tail of the ball throw down to a segment of the train's vector. The way to solve for B is to use the sine relationship for the angle we know on the left end of the diagram, the 10 degree angle. If we take the sine of this, we'll get B over the ball's vector. In other words, B over 40 kilometers per hour. Rearranging for B, we come up with 6.9 kilometers per hour, and that is our line length for B, 0.69 centimeters using the same scale. We can then figure out the line length of A, the segment of the train's vector that is defined by the left-right angle. Again, trigonometric relationships for our known angle of 10 permit us to solve for A by dividing it over the ball vector. And that turns out to be 39 kilometers per hour or 3.9 centimeters on our diagram. The rest of the train's vector is a value represented by 50, which was the total line length, minus the length of A, which we just solved for. Simple subtraction brings us to 11 kilometers per hour. Finally, we're ready to talk about the velocity vector we have produced through this trigonometric relationship. First, we'll take the tangent of the unknown angle. We'd like to know what direction our vector is going in, and this will produce it. Essentially, that tangent is going to give us b in kilometers per hour over our line segment that was 50 minus a. We've already solved these, so that's 6.9 kilometers per hour over 11 kilometers per hour. That gives us a total of 0 0.63, and that's just a ratio. It doesn't have any units. Next up, we can get to the theta by taking the arc tangent of that measurement, that ratio that we just determined, and we find it to be 32 degrees. That's the measurement of theta, or the angle at which V is traveling from horizontal. Next up, we'll find the sine of that angle in order to determine the line length of V. The sine of that angle will be our line length of B, over V, so that's 6.9 kilometers per hour, and our V is unknown, so we'll need to rearrange to solve for V. When we do so, we're going to find that our V is actually equal to 13 kilometers per hour. That's very close to our measurement that we made using a ruler. So another way to solve this will of course give us 13 kilometers per hour at 32 degrees south of east, just like we solved previously. One last thought before we wrap up. We'll notice in the trig version of the problem, we ended up with 13 kilometers per hour, but in the ruler and protractor method, we ended up with 12 kilometers per hour. This is not uncommon and reflects a source of error in the way that we're calculating it. Most likely that error is generated by the way that we are taking the trigonometric functions on the individual angles. Slight discrepancies are leading to an error of about one unit between the two methods. That's perfectly natural. We need to be aware that the way we calculate things may generate answers that are slightly different but close enough within the error of the measurement techniques we are using.